Oh man, I am really low on supplies. I only have six Ultra Balls, I'm out of Pokeballs, I have less than 100,000 Poke Dollars, and anyone that's played this game knows that that isn't going to last long at all, and I don't even have any lures? Oh man, this is bad. And if you're in the same position as me, this is going to be your guide for money making in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Now I will admit early on that this is going to be a pretty weird video because it initially just started off as the ultimate money making guide in Pokemon, payday versus non-payday, which payday is the best Pokemon, how do you get the most money per minute. But about midway through, I realized a pretty crazy exploit that you can do for an alternative money making method, so we do get to that eventually at some point in the video. Now if you end up enjoying this video and you feel like it helps you out, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, we need to spread as much positivity now in Pokemon more than ever, so let's get into it. So the biggest thing that we're going to be breaking down today is if Payday is worth it going through the Elite Four. Now there are the daily events, I have done other money making guides, like pretty much you can make a lot more quick money by doing all the gym leaders every day and then picking up the items scattered about the Kanto region, but what if you've already done that and you just want to go for like one big hard farming mode, like couple hours at the Elite Four, what is the best way to do it? And that's kind of why I'm comparing, like, is one-shotting everything with Payday going to be worth it? Can you even one-shot everything with Payday? Or is it better to actually have, like, a weaker Pokemon? You know, if you're two at three-hit KOing a lot of Pokemon, that extra money that you're getting from Payday, does it actually make you more money per minute? So those are the calculations we're going to be running today. And Payday is pretty interesting, because it has a very low power. And the Pokemon that get access to Payday, well, there's also not a lot of same type attack bonus. So we have Persian, Eevee, and Snorlax. And that's going to be the most damage on the payday. But these Pokemon also don't really have that crazy stats. Like, I was thinking, is Eevee going to be pretty good for this? Well, Partner Eevee only has a 75 on the attack. It's already level 100 and maxed out, then it's a pretty solid option. Because I was looking at Persian, I got a level 100 Persian, but it's only 70 attack. Now, I don't really think there's too much of a difference between the 70 on Persian and the 75 on Eevee. And then we get to the Snorlax. Snorlax actually is a lot better. 100 base attack. Is that going to be enough stats to actually make a difference, though? Or what about just like a regular Pokemon? We don't have to have the same type attack bonus, and that's kind of another thing that we're going to be breaking down, because there's also a few really powerful Pokemon that get access to the payday. We have Rhydon right here. That's a 130 attack Pokemon. Even though it's not Stab, it's going to have good damage, and is it going to be worth it? Or if you already have like a level 100 Pokemon that you can use, will any old payday Pokemon work? Or is it better to have like a Snorlax, a Persian, same type attack, and then one-shot everything? Well, let's, let's get into it. So here's how payday works. The level of your Pokemon times 5 is how much Poke Dollars you get for each use of Payday. That becomes pretty significant, so it means like you pretty much have to have a level 100 Pokemon to get the most optimal, optimal money. If you're like one-shotting on level 90, well, that means you're just losing out on a little bit of Poke Dollars every time. Um, also, I didn't start the timer. Alright, good. It, it looks like I started at like 11.16pm almost exactly with this. So now the plan is to just mash. And that's, that's, that's the things I want to compare, because there's a couple of things you can do to maybe make this more efficient, or to maybe make it quicker. Like, I could use my partner power if I'm really in a pinch against a certain trainer. I think I might want to save that for Lance, that way I'm just, like, going to be more, uh, survivability, I'm going to get through some of his more dense Pokemon, like, Theridactyl, the Dragonite, the Alolan Exeggutor, those things are just hard to KO anyways, so maybe save it for that, and then if you can kind of cycle through it, those benefits will end up helping you out. Also, X items. That if you need to one-shot everything and you have a Pokemon that isn't capable of it, just use the next attack. Now, it does take away a turn, that's not really too much time, and it does cut into your profits just a little bit, so that, what is it, like 675 for each use of those? So it like takes away one-ish payday from each one. And as you can see, some Pokemon, they get two-shot, like the Dugong, but Snorlax has like 20% more attack than us at max level with max candies and stuff. Oh, hey, we got a crit right there, so that would have been 3-8 KO. Now it's 2-8 KO. We dodged the Blizzard, so that's pretty cool. And so it's like we would have one-shot um, Dugong. Without the crit, we probably two-shot Cloyster. So the battle with Snorlax is going to go a lot faster, but is that better? So it's like, the, the 500 Poke Dollars extra, like, it's actually, you know, if you, if you don't want Stab, maybe it's better to just have, like, a weaker hitting Pokemon to 2-hit KO, 3-hit KO, almost everything. Uh, Snorlax, this could be a little bit of a problem, because it can, like, use Yawn on me, and then I can fall asleep and stuff. But then I could also have my, like, partner thing wake me up. There's a lot of weirdness that could go on. So yeah, we're asleep. Lapras comes in. That's a po like, the, the Snorlax, or the, not, the, not the Snorlax, the Slowbro, that's just going to be hard to KO anyway. So this is going to take a couple of seconds, it's going to take a little bit of time. And that's just kind of like what we're looking for, for the money per minute 
overall stuff like that so another issue that comes in with a payday as well is that if you're if you're using more paydays so if you're using a weaker pokemon that means you're going to have to refresh the pp more often now you don't have to use like any ether or pp max or anything like that or actually pp up or pp max would probably just be beneficial in general and i should do that for this Persian since it is my primary money farming pokemon and pp max does respawn in Cerulean cave every day so yeah you can do that but when i'm talking about oh wait no never mind don't do that because then you're replacing it with a headed butt and that doesn't work never mind ignore the last 30 seconds of what i just said but um yeah and then we can get into a battle like this like is this good right here it's taking time but we're getting a lot of money off of this sand slash potentially however at the end of this battle we're definitely going to need to uh replace our payday with something so that's that takes a little bit of time does the time offset that's what we're looking into today so it looks like Lorelei takes about th or three minutes total on this one and that's going to take about another minute to change all the uh, stats and stuff or not ch change all the stats change all the moves and then we can just keep on going on so i'm not going to go through the entirety of the elite four in this video and then just like really drag it on but that just kind of shows you the first battle that just kind of shows you what i'm doing and it, it can also just be better this way like if i have any pokemon and i just match with payday can i be very successful that way so now when we go and uh, swap it out tm case fortunately uh depending on what tms you have you can just kind of uh, sort by name and then TM is or headbutt is gonna be right above payday So you can just kind of mash through this really quick as well So we use 13 right there It's gonna take more than seven to get through Bruno if we had a higher attack on Snorlax We could probably get through Lorelei and then Bruno and then not have to worry about it But then payday is right there. That's pretty good Also, you're gonna need other coverage on your Pokemon like when we go up into Agatha Oh, no, wait, I, I, I instinctually press the B button because like whenever you learn a new move, you know um, we go against Agatha, Snorlax is going to be good because it can get Crunch, Persian has Bite, so we can get through a Gengar or any other immunity Pokemon potentially and stuff like that, and there we go, so yeah, that took like an extra minute right there, I was a little slow on it, so I'm just probably going to like adjust for maybe a little bit of commentary, but if you just mash, that's kind of what we're at, so now, our, so after this, I'm going to go and bring out my Eevee and just kind of have it represent a one-shot Pokemon. Alright, so here's what I've got. I ended up making 101,000 Poke Dollars by using 65 Payday against the Elite Four and the Champion. However, Persian's kind of frail, so I feel like a max potion is unavoidable, especially after going through Bruno, Lance, and then having enough hit points to make it through the Champion. Remember, we're not trying to do anything like cheeky, like max attacks and stuff, and I also had to use the uh, EV boost against Lance, so if you don't have that available, that's also going to set you back a bit, maybe use the next attack there, but I didn't use it every time to try to get one-shots. I was just matching A and trying to play like as least try hard as possible but i do feel like you have to use a max attack against bruno since those fighting type pokemon against your normal type pokemon are pretty brutal which means we'll make about ninety-eight thousand five hundred dollars or 500 poke dollars profit by going through the elite four and it took me 19 minutes so i was making 5100 almost 5200 poke dollars a minute on average with this method so, by going through it with an EV that was just one-shotting everything, uh, it wasn't using Payday, it was just kind of like representing one-shots as though I had a level 100 maxed out Snorlax, I was able to do that in about 13 and a half minutes. So if you're adding the extra time that it takes to recycle a Headbutt Payday, and then taking a little bit longer because we're not one-shotting every single thing with the Payday, probably about 15 minutes to go through the Elite Four with the Snorlax. And Snorlax, it can have other moves like Earthquake. Crunch, so you can use that to get through the Pokemon that you're having problems with. Ice Punch for Lance's Aerodactyl. So I'm seeing that you could use about 30 Payday in 15 minutes. That's actually going to give you more Poke Dollars per minute. So Persian's good, it's solid, and it's just kind of like fun to mash through. And technically, if you don't have like a 30 minute investment and you only want to do something in 20 minutes, you make more money in that amount of time since you're locked into the Elite Four. So it just kind of shows like it could be worth the time investment on the Snorlax, but that will take a lot of time. If you already have a level 100 or you're just kind of like cheesing a shiny Snorlax, you have tons of Snorlax candies, that's going to be the way to go. And it does kind of show that if you have other Pokemon that are like one-shotting everything and just kind of like thread in some payday, if you can make it to around 30 payday, 15 minutes with any Pokemon, not just Snorlax, that means you're, st you're still going to be more efficient. However, the video does not end there because I wanted to make sure we had everything covered for this money-making guide to make sure that we get every little bit of Poke Dollars per minute out of this game. So let's go and exploit a very obscure mechanic. The blackout mechanic. Now, for the most part, you aren't trying to intentionally lose in Pokemon games, but in modern Pokemon games, they have changed it. Old Pokemon games, you lose half of your money on a blackout. Well, in modern Pokemon games, it's actually based on your Pokemon's level. And we can exploit that because we can actually go into our Pokemon box, pull out a low level Pokemon, which means we can catch a level 3 wild Pokemon on Route 1. And then the most amount of money that we lose is only 360. 
So now the question is, can we beat Lorelei and then go into Bruno, swap out our Pokemon, lose instantly, and get back into the fight in a quick enough amount of time to where it's actually a better money-making method? Now, I wanted to show this right here because I used a max attack or, like, an X attack. That way I could get my Snorlax attack to where we're theoretically one-shotting Lorelei as though we are a level 100 Snorlax. Also, I'm pretty sure it's Lorelei, but for some reason I can't, like, the E sound this video. Whatever. Yeah, I think it actually it's actually a little bit of a sidetrack. I think it's based on our model. You know, that looks like Lorelei, but all the other ones look like Lorelei. I don't know. Weird. So, let's go and start the timer, and then I'm going to, like, try to end it back right here. So, let's go and start the timer now and see if we can make a good amount of money using Payday to kind of, like, top it off. What? How did it, how did it survive? That just doesn't seem... Oh, I guess... Oh, damage formula, right. Because as you're a lower level, you're dealing less damage. So that kind of takes away, like, a couple extra seconds. Because, you know, those little bits of seconds add up when we're dealing with such a short amount of time. Also, I could have just been, like, one of the unluckiest damage rolls as I'm happening to be recording this video. So we one-shot the Jinx. We one-shot that. Cloyster, I think, is always going to be a two-shot. But I do have Crunch and I have Earthquake, so we can get through a Pokemon a little faster as well. Um, it is going to make it to where we make, like, 500 extra Poke Dollars this battle, but... Maybe some weirdness, maybe we don't one-shot everything at level 100. The overall goal is can we get this done in a quick enough amount of time. So that's going to be 2 on the Cloister. Lapras, that's a 2-8 KO. I'm pretty sure even at level 100. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and then Slowbro, so Slowbro, that's a crunch. That's gone. So let's do that. Like, the, the Payday just has such low base power that we're actually getting with a stab move on that Payday. 60 power compared to Crunch's base 80. And then the super effective hit just means it's absurd. So yeah, when we have a baller like Snorlax come in, it's going to be a lot better. So alright, a minute is already passed. And maybe like taking into account, you know, three seconds for the return. Because like, yeah, if the opponent isn't hitting us back, then that means we're actually getting those extra seconds. And again, every little bit matters right now, I feel. So we're, we're, we're making good progress on, on her right now. One minute 30. It looks like we can get this battle done in two minutes. Like, maybe perfectly, optimally, and stuff. But is that enough time? You know, what about, like, having to heal up at the Pokemon Center? What about having to swap our Pokemon? How much money do we end up making from this battle to where it could end up paying off? So, there we go. Uh, let's see. 24, and then, ooh, 23. So, yeah, not even 15,000. Like, so, so 14,400. Let's say after we lose. You know, after our Pokemon, uh faints and stuff like that, and we, and we lose from there. So, there we go. It's going to be Bruno. And now we have to be quick on this one. So, party, Pokemon... Go to the box. Uh, let's just say you already have it, like, in your top slot or something. So you add to party. Swap it out like that. And then, boom, we can do that. We exploit it just like that. And then, now we go into Bruno. All right, we're two minutes in. Can we, like, just instantly lose to Bruno? Because now, when, when we actually look at it that way, only 14,000. So for this to work out, you know, it would have to be three minutes. Actually, no, it would have to be less than three minutes. So we're at two and a half. It looks like this method is not going to be the most money per minute. However, it does show you guys another option. That if you, again, don't want to commit to the Elite Four, you need a really quick 10k. This is how you can get 10k in like 3 minutes. Or at least 14k. So yeah, get 14k in like 3 minutes right there. Because, yeah, I only paid out 720 because I had a low-level Pokemon. So you might notice, like, as you're in these high stages of the game, you're losing a lot more. Well, that's because it's 120 times uh, an insane amount. So, because you have, like, level 50s, level 60s, maybe a level 80 that's just carrying you. So, we go through this. I would say three minutes and something, but that, like, that means we'd have to make over 15,000. I already tested this with Persian to where we made 16,000, but it took four minutes instead. So, that's only 4,000 Poke Dollars per minute instead. And one thing I want to test is, like, what happens when you black out, but there's Pokemon in your uh, Pokemon box? Do they also get uh, PP restored? So, that's our Snorlax. If they don't, then that means that could also take a little bit of extra time. I want, again, I would just want to check this to make sure we had everything. Check summary, and payday's back to full. So that actually isn't a problem right there. And it takes about three minutes to make 14,000, which is pretty good. It's it's not it's not the maximum, but it also just kind of shows, like, that's all you have to do. Just AFK it through there. You run down the paydays. You make a good amount of money, a pretty short amount of time. I think Persian is effectively the same amount of money. And then you just swap to a level three Pokemon. Technically even better if you have a Mew. Because then you have, like, the level 1 Mew that you've never touched, and you can just use that to faint and get 120 right there. So you don't have to worry about paying out a lot of money. You can use the box to kind of exploit and uh, go through right, right there. But overall, those just kind of show the different methods on top of the other existing methods. Talk to the Slowpoke Lady, get a big pearl. Talk to the Diglett. Talk to, or not even talk to, you just go through Cerulean Cave, get tons of items. I mean, 
if you, even if you have like that PP max, that sells for five thousand if you're not doing anything with it. So that's that's the updated money making in Pokemon. Let's go, Pikachu and Eevee. Hope you all enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.